White Dudes for Harris raised $4 million for Kamala Harris over a Zoom call Monday evening. The group is the latest demographic-based mobilization effort backing Harris. 190,000 people participated on the call. That was arranged by Democratic organizers unaffiliated with the Harris campaign. Contenders of Harris's potential VP picks, including Pete Buttigieg, Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz, and Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker joined the call, as did celebrities Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Mark Hamill, Bradley Whitford, Josh Gad, Paul Scheer, singers Lance Bass and Josh Groban, and of course, the original white dude Jeff Bridges, who played the role of Jeff Lebowski, the dude in the 90s hit film Big Lebowski. By the end of the call, over 150,000 people ended up joining the group. Hmm. But in the hours since the call, the White Dudes for Harris X account appeared to have been temporarily suspended. Midas Touch co-founder Brett Mieslas posted, quote, breaking X has suspended the White Dudes for Harris account at Dudes for Harris after raised more than $4 million for Kamala Harris. This is the real election interference. Well, that's just like your opinion, man. Another ex-user posted, quote, mid-drafting the account. It just locked. No reason given. Ridiculous, but we got it back quickly. They scared. Apparently, the group violated X's community rules leading to the suspension, but it seems the account has been reinstated. Um, I find uh, this kind of group weird, but, um, you know, Ugh, that's a word for word. Man. Yeah. It's just weird. Why, I, it why is are we weird. doing all these race-based groups? Why are, Why? I don't understand. I just don't get it. Well, because many people see race when they interact with other people, and it's a social thing to be like, I don't what does it, it I mean don't see to be white, a white I just dude? see green. Yeah, I just that, see green. I'm a, I identify as green. That's what I put when, you know, ask my race on yeah. forms. Okay, but seriously, the, the white dudes for Harris, I think it's like there is a black woman running for public office. Trump does very well with white men. It's like, what are we doing, fellas? Are we getting together? Are we going to win this thing? Uh, 40,000 people didn't end up joining the group. I don't know if it's just because it was a one-time thing. They joined. They donate. They're on the call. They decide after hearing from their peers who they're going to vote for. They want a country that's good for white dudes. And they're talking about their mutual interests as white dudes in voting for a black woman. And I think that's beautiful and, and maybe a little bit progress. I noticed on uh, Twitter yesterday that, um, do you remember the name Richard Spencer? That's the leader of the uh, white nationalists, um, the leader cool. of the alt-right. Um, he tweeted in support of this, saying that he actually prefers the Democratic yeah, Party Yeah, white now. dudes got to stick together. He, he prefers the Democratic Party and uh, has been a Biden supporter for a while as the party that is more interested in an explicitly white race-based collectivizing. The guy who organized Unite the Right is a Democrat yes. for Kamala Harris. Yes. He supports Kamala Harris. Yes. He supports the Democratic Party and their efforts to outreach to white voters and to structure whites-only spaces. That's what he said on, uh, on Twitter. That doesn't mean he wants Kamala Harris to be president. I don't know what he said about Kamala Harris. He has supported Joe Biden. He was a supporter of Joe Biden. I have a hunch he probably doesn't want a black woman to be president, but we'll let Richard Spencer speak for himself, and we look forward to hearing whoever you endorse. Richard, he can come on the program. Actually, no, no I don't want let's to talk not. To him. Let's. Uh, but you can issue an official that. statement whether or not you support Kamala Harris. We're dying to hear from this. One I'm just white saying. Dude. I'm just saying. My point being, there's a lot of like. If you want to be against racism, stop putting people in racial categories. That I don't know why Democrats are doing all of these things. They, they claim that Republicans are making policies just for white people. That that Republicans don't want. Uh, that Trump and Vance don't want, you know, immigrants to come to the country or don't want a mixed race society or whatever. And you're you're making like explicitly identity based groups day in and day out to support Kamala Harris. It's just like stop thinking about people. Um, as as black or white or Asian or whatever, just think of them as Americans with certain policy interests and needs. And what is the policy coalition that is going to best address what people need, not what black people need or what white people need or what Asian people need, but what the American 
worker needs, the American underprivileged needs. Yeah, I don't think it was about what we need. I think it was more about what do we need to do to live in a country where we actually don't see racial disparities. And acknowledging your race and the divisions across racial lines is important. You can't fix a problem without identifying where it is. And saying, what are we as white dudes not doing enough uh, that results in not enough organizing effort behind ending mass incarceration of black Americans? There's something to be said for everyone realizing that they're trying to divide the American public in order to conquer them. And when I say they, I mean the elites in the country. Making people divided across class, making people divided across religion, across, across ethnicity, across political party, I think is a deliberate tactic so that they can continue to have this uniparty that makes yeah. policies in the direction of the elites and at the expense of everyday working people and coming together as white people and saying, hey, they're, they're trying to push this message that, you know, white supremacy is something that is in danger if a lot of immigrants come in. What are you going to do about it? They're trying to fear monger white people from being against DEI initiatives and from being against lawful immigration. And I think coming together and recognizing that as white dudes is good. Well, I I agree with some of what you said and very much disagree with other parts of it. I agree that the elites are trying to divide us on the basis of artificial distinctions, most importantly race. Elites, progressive elites, love to talk about race. They love to make everything about race because that avoids them having to tackle the actual diff different, uh, difficult class differences in this country that could be addressed by policies that they don't want. So they try to make it about race. But like, I don't think, I don't consider DEI to be some misdirection at all. DEI policies are obnoxious to a vast number of people in the country, including many black Americans who have to sit through the same ridiculous, totally scientifically fraudulent seminars in workplaces and education that everyone else has to and find them just as idiotic and obnoxious. Um, and everyone wants to succeed on their merits to be hired and, and, and admitted on the basis of their merits. Um, and and it's, uh, it's really gone um, off the rails with some of that stuff. On the immigration stuff, right, I'm, I'm a little bit out of step with many others on the right because I do want more legal immigration. I want to make it easier to come here to this country and work and to contribute to the health and productivity of America. And there is a new, um, not necessarily new, an ascendant um, politics on the right that is deeply skeptical of that and thinks that will be bad for the country. And you know, I end up arguing with those people um, all the time. I did like a two hour debate on this subject a month ago, two months ago, for um, uh, with Zero Hedge um, against uh, Ryan Jardusky and Jack Posobiec, who are arguing for much, much, much more restrictive immigration. I think even more, more immigration restrictions than is supported by most Republicans. So that is definitely out there. And, you know, I, I don't think it's, uh, ultimately, I don't think it's good because I don't think it's good for America. I don't think it's good for um, working people here if we have a smaller supply of labor and eventually houses and all the rest. So I, I'm arguing against those policies too, but I don't think it's based on, I don't think it's racism that's motivating it. It's just um, economic concerns. Um, that are now that should be addressed with the other side of the economic argument that this is not actually going to improve our economy to start artificially saying that no we can't have people come in and and contribute to the very economy building the very economy we need yeah I think that's why I like Joseph Gordon Levitt on the call saying and this is someone who's a white man our country originally the only people who could vote were white landowning men we've only ever had presidents who are men with the exception of one black man all of them were white and so I, I appreciated that he said Trump is a businessman, but and, and people say that he'll be good for the economy because of this, but really the way he's run his business is not paying workers. He's not someone who has workers' interests in mind, and workers make up the majority of the economy. So is he really good for the economy? What's been the impact of the Trump presidency? So the call was substantive, talking about real issues among white dudes. <sighs> If you say so. Well, that does it for us today on Rising. Thanks so much for tuning in. And we'll be back with another edition of our show tomorrow. Rob is going to rest his voice up for us. <laughs> be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who like to listen while you're on the go, we are available wherever you get your podcasts. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all. -bye. Bye,